Today on Education Forum, weight loss is exercise enough. We call group exercise classes Group X around here. They're groups of people working out, enjoying fitness classes, and getting in the best shape of their lives. Whether you're looking for a general exercise class, cardio training, or something much more specific, like a cycling class or even yoga or kickboxing, chances are you'll find what you're looking for right here. Most group exercise classes are free with your gym membership and are all designed to help you reach your fitness goals in a fun and energizing environment. You can also be from the studio in the College of Education and Health Professions at Columbus State University in Columbus, Georgia. This is the Education Forum with your host, Dr. Jeffrey Conklin. And welcome to the Education Forum. I'm Jeff Conklin. Just this week we were having a discussion about weight loss and exercise and I decided to do a little research on it. And one of the things that I found is that in most of the states in this country over 25 percent of the population is considered to be obese and in the south it's at least 30 percent. And I thought you know this is a topic we really need to discuss further so I thought we'll bring on a guest. So first let me introduce my guest for today Dr. Clayton Nix. Dr. Nix is an associate professor in exercise science in the College of Education and Health Professions at Columbus State University. Welcome, Clay. Hi, good to be here. Also with me is my co-host, Dr. Greg Blaylock, assistant professor of special education in the College of Education and Health Professions here at Columbus State University. Welcome, Greg. Thanks, Jeff. Well, Clay, I think to start out, we ought to ask the question, what is obesity? Obesity, I define it as over fat. Okay. Um, we categorize people into underweight, normal weight, overweight, and obese. And of okay. course, obesity is on the extreme end of that. Mm -hmm. And we use something called a body mass index, which is really just taking your height and weight uh, and, and, and having a formula to divide that by. And people who have a BMI, a body mass index of 30 or higher, are categorized into uh, the obesity category. Okay, now when you're saying, uh, you know, that body mass index, does that take into account people with larger frames or athletic frames, or doesn't that matter? It does not take that into account, and that's one of the flaws with that. But, but for the most part, it, it hits a large percentage of the population. You know, I ask that question because I have gone out and I've looked at that myself, and it, with my weight and my height, I come across as obese. <laughs> well, <laughs> do I look obese to you? you know? Obese? I'm not sure. Overweight? Uh, you'd have to. I'd have to check your BMI. But no, you don't. Okay. <laughs> you and, and that's the thing is, you think, wow, you know, I got. Kind of There's other ways to measure it too. You can measure someone's actual body fat percentage. Okay. Is that where you use those little caliper things? So you use the calipers, or you can use a couple of other different methods. You can mm -hmm. put them in a, uh, an underwater weighing uh, technique if you want to use that, or you can use some kind of what we call bioelectrical impedance analysis and estimate oh, wow. it that way. Um, and, and generally, if you're about 30% or higher, you're probably going to be categorized as uh, close to the obese category. Okay. Has, well, has I, that, I wonder, has that uh, always been the same standard? You said 30% or higher. Has is, is that changed over the last 30, 40 years? I don't think it's changed that much, and I hate to use 30% as an exact um, Marker, criteria. criteria. Mm -hmm. Some might say 35 or 40 percent. Oh, definitely 35. Um, has it changed in the last 40 years? I'd have to look up on that. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that it has, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, how severe of a problem is this? I mean, what, what can this lead to? Huge problem. Okay. Um, like you said in your opening, about 25 percent to 30 percent of Americans are classified as obese. Okay. Mm -hmm. 60 percent up to 66% are classified as overweight. Mm -hmm. So real big problem in the country, yeah. particularly here in the southern states. Okay. Um, yeah. Why in the south? Good question. <laughs> A lot of things going on there. Probably uh, could be our dietary habits down here. Okay. Okay. Could be a cultural thing. Okay. Could be some kind of genetic issue there. Um, is anyone looking into the like the genetic part? We seem to blame genetics for everything lately. A lot of studies going on with genetics. Okay. okay. But I think you're going to find 
that may some may can explain their obesity with genetics, but a lot can really explain it behavior changes. Okay. Well, you know, you say behavior changes. You know, I'm not from the South, and having moved down here, I love the food down here. So do and, I. And I don't think it's good for me. <laughs> um, I love the fats that are in everything. It gives right. it the taste and the texture. So when you talk behavioral issues, that could be a big part, I would think. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, what about exercise? Can, you know, just 30 minutes of moderate exercise make a difference? Very, very small difference. And, it, and you've got to look at it from a couple of different ways. If you're someone who is obese or overweight, mm -hmm. and you're trying to lose weight, Yeah. That much exercise by itself is probably not going to make much of an impact on you by itself. Even if you're like going from a sedentary lifestyle and you're just going to do 30 minutes, that's... It, it could make... It, uh, you're going to burn calories, so you're okay. going to burn off that energy. And so you're, you, if you do that and don't change anything else with your diet, so in other words, you don't go reward yourself with an extra large fry, oh. <laughs> uh, then it, it, can, it can have an effect. But the scientific studies show you're probably going to need a little bit more of that if you're already obese. Okay. Now, okay. if you're trying to prevent weight gain, that, that amount is the minimum could help you at least keep those pounds off for a few more years. So that would be the minimum to keep them off, providing you don't increase your caloric intake because you're rewarding yourself for, gosh, I did all of this. I probably could have another cookie and it won't affect me. Exactly. Uh, but even then, it's, that's, that's been the guidelines for the past several years, and um, uh, it's still the minimum amount. So okay. it's, uh, it, people might need more. But keep in mind, that's, that's activity that can be spread out throughout the day. And oh, a lot oh, of times okay, we confuse okay. that. Yes. You know, we always think of the 30 minutes in the gym. 30 minutes in the gym. And, yep. and that's, another, that's an issue we can talk about here because we, let's, can, let's. We, we think about exercise and we always think in the gym, working out. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Um, and exercise can have many meanings. In fact, for some people, it's a bad word. So we <laughs> use the word physical activity okay. because it's okay. less intrusive. Okay. Um, and we're talking about moderate physical activity of 30 minutes, which is about the equivalent of a brisk walk. So okay. uh, we're not talking about real vigorous exercise mm -hmm. we're saying that so a, a brisk walk um what is 30 minutes is, what do you think about a two mile walk for uh, most people that a would be a, that would be a really brisk walk for most people that's so 15 minutes a mile that's 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 fast. that's pretty fast okay. for, particularly okay. for beginners but you're in the right area there 15 to 18 minutes okay mm -hmm. and uh -huh. again i think a lot of the literature says if you can at least get 10 minute bounce of that um, you're going to have, that's, that's good for you. Is it going to have a huge impact on weight if you do nothing else, if you don't change any diet? I'm going to tell you, it probably is not going to have a huge impact. So what are some other things then that we That's not the news you want to hear. But that's not the news any of us want to hear. But no. is it going to hurt you? No. Is no. It, could it help you more than doing nothing? Absolutely. Okay. So we're talking about three to five percent potential weight loss from that amount. Okay. I see. Okay. I see. And so when we're talking about uh, doing, uh, trying to lose more weight or trying to uh, trim up uh, more than that 3 to 5%, uh, what else might we consider doing? Diet modification. Diet yeah. modification is, to me, has to be at the core of any kind of um, attempt to lose weight if you're obese or overweight. So when you're saying diet modification, are you talking about changing the things we eat or reducing the, the amount we eat or, you know? Probably both. I'm, I'm more of a reduction because okay. I like, like you, I like the food down here and I like the southern food and I like to reward myself with pizza every now and then. Oh, absolutely. But uh, to me, it's a portion, well, there's a lot of things that can affect someone's weight, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking portion control, uh, that with some exercise and maybe some other things you can do in your life to, to change your behavior, that's right. going to be the key. You know, I'm reminded of... Um, this idea. I, w I was in a discussion several years ago with somebody who uh, talked about this idea uh, around making making young kids finish their plate. It's oh, important that you yeah. eat everything oh, in your, yeah. on your plate. Yes. And how years ago that was that that was important. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Me too. Uh, yeah. But but as we get into the modern age, and as our plates are not so much coming from our home kitchens, but our plates are coming from restaurant plates and value meals and that sort of thing. Um, our discussion kind of uh, revolved around the idea that perhaps it's not always wise to get kids to finish their complete hamburger or finish their whole plate at a restaurant or even at home. Uh, I wonder if you have any comments on, on that idea. I, I agree, but I, I kind of understand that mentality because I grew up with that mentality and, and that 
you're grateful for the food you have and you need to be appreciative of it and yes. whatever you put on yes. your plate you should eat otherwise yes. it goes to waste mm -hmm. so I can understand that kind of dilemma but uh, particularly when you finish your plate at, at restaurants often you've got two maybe three times the serving size you actually that's exactly eat. this person's you know, and point I think that's a yeah. great point they, they, when you say that and yeah. I know yeah. for myself when I go out to eat uh, many times I get through about a half or three quarters of, of my meal that I order, and then after that, I'm just eating because it's there. Eating for yeah. pleasure. Yeah. Yeah. Eat for it's pleasure. there, <laughs> and I can't send it back. I paid for it type thing. When you go to these restaurants, it, and I won't name any restaurants because they're all, they're all like that, these typical these restaurants, it's really common to eat 1,500 up to 2,000 calories in one setting. If you get an appetizer and you get a, um, a full entree, and sometimes people get desserts and they get mm -hmm. sodas and, and sweet tea in the South, Sure. 1,500 calories, you're getting, for some, over half their caloric intake in that one setting or, or two-thirds. Well, you for know, some, the entire amount they need for that day. Yeah, when you're saying 2,000, right. isn't that like the max for some people? It's, it's, yeah. It is. Right, it is. Right. In fact, your food labels will usually are based on 2,000 calorie a day diets or 2,500 calorie a day diets. So okay. it's a lot of, a lot of food there, you're, calories there you're ingesting. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and, and I've read some things about that recently where certain restaurants have you know, just the French fries are fourteen hundred calories yeah. with the cheese and the, the cheese. chili and the you know everything else. Yeah, those yeah. are the good restaurants. Those are the good all restaurants. The good, all the stuff we like, and, and yes. I think it's okay to to do that every 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 now and then. But you've got people doing that every day, and they're doing the fast food every day for lunch. They're doing it all the time. Yes. And they're they're working a lot, and so they eat out quite a bit, or they're taking food to go from mm -hmm. eating out. Mm -hmm. So. I think that's one of the contributing factors. So, oh, okay. when you talk about then, I, I think you mentioned a few minutes ago that you subscribe to uh, personally this uh, the philosophy of, of reducing what you eat, uh, perhaps on a daily basis. So, let's say I'm somebody that does a lot of fast food. I've got a job on the run, and I'm always out. Um, then, are we talking about doing something like skipping lunch? No, no. In, 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 no. in that way, reducing what we eat. Or no, how might you advise that? When you do that kind of uh, dietary approach it, it, it you can say you've skipped those calories but a lot of times you're gonna be so hungry mm. in the evening you're going to overcompensate mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and kind of gorge yourself sure. for dinner okay sure so uh, most of the recommendations will say you know try to eat three three meals and make them smaller a day so that you don't have those uh, real binge okay binge sure. sessions when now, you're just starving is, isn't it true though if you eat late that you can actually get heavier by eating at that time of day I think I think the data on that is unclear. Okay. Um, okay. I would I would argue if you're eating late, early, whenever you're still putting that energy into your body. So okay. So when does it um, when does it matter when you eat it? Okay. Okay. Good. I, I was just wondering that. Now, when when we talked about that exercise part, though, um, is it? I mean, it's not really exercise unless you're sweating, right? Again, it depends on how you define exercise. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'll take you to my intro to exercise science class. We'll define exercise, and there's a couple of ways you can define it. The first way is planned and structured physical okay. activity. So something right. that mm -hmm. is 30 minutes, going to the gym, mm -hmm. planned out. The other way we can describe it is just any kind of activity you can quantify. So any activity you're doing during, it, during the day, um, walking from your, your so car to the office, or You shopping, walking over here today. Or yard work, or me walking over here today. Okay. Uh, some might say that that's inclusive in, in exercise. So, okay. uh, getting back to your question, remind me what it was again. That if it's if you're not sweating, it's not real exercise. That's that that's that's not true. Okay, that's one of those myths. Like if you eat late, it's you're going to put on more weight. I think so. Okay. And, and, okay. And, and moderate intensity exercise may not even bring you to a sweat. Ah, oh, and, and that's what we're talking is moderate. We're not right, talking right. to really okay. And okay. It could depending on how fit you are. Mm-hmm. But it, it may, a brisk walk may or may not really give you that, that sweat that you're talking about, a okay. vigorous workout. Yeah, yeah. So. And, of course, here in the South, just a brisk walk from one building to the next can we'll, be enough we'll, to you're break the yes. sweat. Yes, Columbus, yes. Georgia in August, yes, <laughs> yes. definitely. <laughs> definitely. Now, uh, what about the notion that exercise turns fat into muscle? Exercise turns fat into muscle. I think people misconstrue that. Um, okay. It, obviously, fat cells are fat cells. Muscle cells are muscle cells. Okay, okay. It'd be like me saying um, my skin can turn into my liver. It, <laughs> it's not, you're not going to have that kind of conversion. You're going to burn fat with exercise, hopefully. You're going to burn carbohydrate with exercise. Okay. Um, 
but that's not going to magically convert to muscle. You may strengthen the muscles you have underneath. You okay. may build some of those if you're doing that type of exercise, but you're not going to have some type of conversion. They're not going to convert right, over. Right, okay. Right. So okay. really, in terms of the end result, less fat, more muscle, it, it sounds like maybe it has more to do with the type of exercise you engage in, whether it's an exercise that is more muscle building. Muscle uh, building, resistance training is going to have an effect on building that muscle underneath. And usually people who are engaging in that or um, they might experience some fat loss, but they more often will if they're having some kind of dietary restriction and if they've included some type of cardiovascular exercise, which is better for burning fat. I mm -hmm. see. Sure, sure, sure. So when you're, when you're engaging, whether it's uh, some sort of uh, moderate exercise or some sort of um, uh, weight training type exercise, uh, I've heard different theories of, around stretching before you, you engage in that. It's, it's really important to stretch right before it's not so important to stretch before, but it's very important to stretch afterwards. I know when I go to the gym, I see all types of different types of people. Yeah. I'm somebody, admittedly, that um, prefers to never, ever stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and my muscles bind up as a result. That feels great. Yeah, I'm wondering what your what philosophy for, yeah. on that is. Well, my philosophy is, is uh, I like to do kind of a light warm-up, then maybe do a little light stretching, then do a workout, and then I do most of my stretching, if any, because <laughs> I'm like you. I usually skip it. Mm -hmm. I usually do a lot of it afterward. But I think it really depends on uh, the person. If they, if they are someone with tight muscles who aren't very flexible, they, they may want to consider making sure they're, they're warmed up okay. adequately. And it depends on how hard they're going to work out and what they're doing. Now, now you are kind of using the word stretching and warming up um, synonymously. To, well, stretching is usually considered part of warming up, but okay. I like to do okay. a light cardiovascular, a light jog or a brisk walk okay. and get my muscles warm first and then stretch the muscles, All right. and okay. then do, do my workout, and then do a more extensive stretching after the workout or maybe at night. Now, why are you doing the stretching afterwards if you were doing them to warm up? Muscles are really heated up and warmed up then. Okay. It's the best time to optimize that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In my opinion. All right. So I think stretching's been oversold somewhat, but I think you're kind of seeing it come back now, and people are kind of backing off saying, you have to do all this right before you go. I don't mm -hmm. Oh, it, it's almost like religion we see some yeah, of the people yeah, out yeah. there. They've got their whole stretching routine and, and that they they're going through. They, and if it works for them, you know, that's fine. Okay, okay, but it's, it's a personal preference more than a in necessity my, in my then? In view it is. I think it's okay. important to do okay. it, and I think it's, it, it can help prevent injuries. I think you can do it too much, uh, but I think um, mm -hmm. it really depends on who you are and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. How about eating before working out? <laughs> is that, does that make much of a difference? Uh, I just had my uh, Ita big Italian lunch, and now I'm going to go. It's <laughs> one o'clock. I'll hit the gym and work out. Is is that going to make much of a difference? Uh, it will, but it's still in your stomach. So generally, I advise two and a half, three hours if you've eaten a full meal before you go. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It okay. could it could cause some gastrointestinal distress. Um, and if you're going to exercise in the morning, sometimes it's a good idea to have at least a light snack. Okay. To sort of uh, give you a little energy. Get some, gets, gets your energy. Get some okay. blood glucose. But, but you got to tie all that into to, to weight loss. You, you got to think about that. Are you going to eat a snack right after your exercise or right before? You might be putting just as many calories in before you that you're going to burn during the session. Isn't that what it really is boiling down to right here? It that is. that if you don't change your eating habits and you work out and then reward yourself or say, geez, I'm really starving now that I've worked out, that we're just defeating the whole purpose. It, it could if you look at it that way, but you've got to look at the benefits that exercise provides. Okay. So if you, if you got, you've got to consider those, that exercise provides great mental benefits, mm -hmm. okay. Um, okay. cardiovascular disease prevention benefits, mm -hmm. all those kinds of things that go with it. Um, it's easy to, comp to compensate a reward after an exercise oh, session. Oh, sure, sure. But uh, I, you mentioned starving after an exercise session. There's mm -hmm. been some studies that say it has no, no increase on, 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 not on appetite. Okay. Some have found okay. an increase. I think a lot of it really depends on how hard you work out and how long you work out. All right, all right. So, uh, so, so getting back to then the, the, the introduction, the opening video uh, in this um, particular uh, show, we're talking about the rise in obesity. We're talking yes. about the incidence of obesity. and. One of my basic questions, and maybe this is too silly to ask, but you know, we're seeing a rise in obesity over the last, what, 15, 20 years, and we can get into that in a few minutes, but um, I also, just in my casual observation, it seems to me that 
we have a huge emphasis in our society on working out. Mm -hmm. We see mm -hmm. a lot of people jogging. Yes. We see a lot of people getting gym memberships right. and going mm -hmm. to the gyms. There's gyms all over the place. Uh, many universities, such as CSU, has, has a gym to go to. Uh, people are swimming out. There's workout routines. It seems to me that we, we're seeing exercise going up and we're seeing obesity go up. How come, how come we're not seeing obesity go down because of an apparent <laughs> rise in people's exercise levels? Yeah. Or is there actually a rise in people's exercise levels? Um, I think we're still, a lot of the population is not even meeting the minimum recommendations for physical activity. So yes, ah, okay. gym membership is up. Yes, a lot of the people we know may work out in the gym mm -hmm. or they're gonna work out at this new facility we have here. But um, think about out of every 10 people you, knew, you know, how many actually go to a gym? I mean, is it two out of 10 or three out of 10? Yeah, it's not a and huge percent. So no. maybe 30, 20%. So you've got the rest, the 60 to 80% who aren't, aren't just, doing that. So, uh, and not that they have to do that for, for weight loss necessarily, but. Um, for so, cardiovascular health. For cardiovascular health, okay, correct. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Can you be fit and fat? Yes. Okay, so I have a friend that claims he's the fittest fat guy I'll ever meet. You can. Okay. You absolutely can. There, and I know, I do too. I, I've got a couple of friends who, who, who actually eat really well. Okay. And they exercise very frequently. They're very, very fit. Mm -hmm. And they just have a hard time losing weight. They just carry I, I around just, a lot. And I think yeah. for them it's a genetic issue. Okay, but okay. If we had to measure their fitness and compare it, if they raced you yeah. down the street, yeah. they might beat you. And they might, oh yeah. Right, yeah. or me. Because so, they're, uh, they're putting that so Yes, you definitely okay. can be fit or fat. Okay, okay, because I, you know, we fit always think fat. of it as one or the other, right. but, but you can do both, right. okay. you can do both. Uh, but when we start getting into uh, fat as it relates to obesity, uh, I'm assuming that that relationship, it, uh, doesn't hold true necessarily. Can you can you be fit and obese? <laughs> Probably. And when you when you think obese, and particularly with the morbid, morbidly obese, really high abdominal right. fat, right? It's going to be really hard to to. I, I, you're, it's probably going to be hard to find somebody who's really fit and who's and who's has that level. But those who may be overweight and they're close to that obese, right. yeah, I think you can find that. The ones when you, the higher up you go on the BMI, you're probably going to find much less, less, less fitness. And, and, and the higher their, their disease risk goes up. And, yeah. and, and, well, and let's talk about that disease risk. What are we talking? Cardiovascular disease, coronary okay. artery disease, stroke. Okay. Those are the main ones. And, and those are big issues here in the South, so right? Type 2 diabetes is, the, is, is, I've left that out, it's the biggest one that's hitting us right now. Um, I was looking at something just today in the paper, and they were talking about in China now that it's one in 10 people have type 2 diabetes. I haven't read that, but yeah, that, so it's not just the U.S. No, no, that's now, interesting. That, now that they're adapting more of our diet, I think. Is, is yep. it our diet, or it, is it? Strong relationship to our diet, I, I think, and, and our fitness levels, and our, our weight, Okay. our, okay. our overall weight. I, I think you'll so, find less prevalence in, say, Japan. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing an increase from the things I'm reading in childhood type 2 diabetes. Is that a relationship with the obesity as well? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay. because kids are getting fatter now than they were 15, 20 years ago. The BMIs, back uh, 15, 20 years, you might have 6 or 7% who were mm -hmm. overweight or okay. obese, now 10, 13, 15%. And why is that? Good question. Yeah. Good question. Well, that, that's probably no easy, uh, there's no one answer to that, but I, I've heard so many different reasons. I wonder how many of them are truly accurate. For instance, uh, I've, I've read and heard both that you know one reason that we're seeing kids uh, uh, become more kids obese is video games. And that seems like an easy thing to blame. Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, but I wonder how accurate, if there's any research that really supports the rise in, in gaming with kids, uh, because I, it seems to me I could just counter just as much when we're seeing a rise in skateboarding over the last 15 years. <laughs> you make an excellent point there. there. Uh, I think when you look at the etiology of obesity, no matter what the population, you're not going to pinpoint one thing. It's it's kind of like a perfect storm of everything. Okay. In the last 20 to 30 years, increase in gaming, increase in sedentary jobs, right. increase in activity. Okay. Um, increase, more fast food. Uh, more fast food and higher, higher uh, larger serving sizes. Ah. Okay. More um, uh, high fructose uh, fructose corn syrup in foods, so the sweeteners and cokes right, and things right. like that. Um, if, if you really listed everything, there's so many different things that have hit our culture in this in this kind of this time. Now you mentioned high fructose corn syrup, and that seems to be in everything today. It is. Um, well, it's in a lot. But okay. Um, I mean, it's the sweetener in Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. And does that have a uh, any impact at all? 
I read something the other day that said our consumption of high fructose corn syrup, and I'm not, I need to check the accuracy. Okay. Of this, okay. Since 1970, has increased by about a thousand percent. That almost runs along with the increase of uh, obesity and uh, being overweight and things of that nature, doesn't it? Probably close. I mean, there could and be. I'd, a, I'd like to read that to verify that, but because uh, a thousand seems really, really high to me, but I think all of us in here would agree that. Well, just from growing up, I mean, how large was a soda back when right. we grew up? It was about, what, yeah. six ounces? Yeah. Eight, eight, eight ounces, ounces maybe max. Ten. For, yeah. Yeah. Now it's 24? <laughs> yeah. And now you get the jumbo cup. and Well, well yeah, many many places now it's it's bottomless. You go yeah, in and you the order the yeah, drink yeah. And, and you get as much as you want. Well, sure. how about those students you have walk into class that's got like the half yeah. gallon size, yeah. you know, right. cup? You how know? does a bladder hold that? Yeah. Maybe it's a different, different, <laughs> whole different show. But well, and yeah. the coffee, uh, coffee doesn't have lots, but coffee, the, the mochas and the, the milks, mm. and they have a couple hundred calories. Well, and you just don't see people drinking black coffee. You're right, seeing right. it's always the mochas and the, mochas you know, and it's, the lattes. People, and they and don't you know, realize it. Yeah. Or they'll eat a bagel, and a bagel that seems healthy, or, or a muffin, it's 300 calories. Uh, the 300 calories that you can't burn in 30 minutes of moderate physical activity. Yeah, that's a great or point you, there, yeah. Might, no, you probably won't burn about half of it. Okay, in, so in that amount. then let me ask you this question. If I eat just healthy foods, can I eat as much as I want? Um, so if I stick with my vegetarian lifestyle, can I do that? What's the proverb? Which way is more, a ton of rocks or a ton of feathers? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> uh, calorically, if, you're, if they're equal, mm -hmm. if your healthy foods calorically are equal to the healthy foods of junk food, I would say, no, you can't do that. But um, uh, You disappoint me. <laughs> Volume-wise. <laughs> right. What, a plate of broccoli may seem like a lot of food, but compare that to a plate of nachos. Clearly, the broccoli is going to much calorically less okay. dense okay. and healthy for you. Okay. So I'd be I'm cautious to say eat whatever healthy food you want. But eat until you're full. But eat perhaps. until you're full. But so when you're, when you're talking calor calories. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just change it over to healthy things and <laughs> eating it all I want is not going to help me, huh? Mm -hmm. Calorically speaking, okay, you know, okay. someone else would probably argue with me on that. But so what? Three thousand calories of healthy foods is. So, so bottom line, caloric restriction is weight loss. Is weight loss. That's it. Energy in, energy out. It's a simple equation. What goes in must come out, and and we really expend energy three different ways. Okay. We expend energy at rest mm -hmm. for normal function. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. We, we have very very little control over that. Okay. We expend energy when after we eat a meal. It takes some energy to digest that mm -hmm, food, so, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you should go eat a lot. So you'll. <laughs> well, darn! I would, there you go. <laughs> and then we we expend en we expend energy when we have physical activity and exercise. So, okay. So to me, of, of those three, the one that makes the most sense is the is the activity. Oh, the activity uh, sounds like a, a key component. But you know, I've, I've heard you know there's all those diet myths out there. I've heard the one. Well, if you eat a lot of celery, then it's really a negative because it takes so much. You know, energy to chew it up and to digest it, as opposed right. to the ca caloric intake okay. you're, yes. you're taking. Yeah. yeah, that is that is one of those things that I've, yes. I've read in different places, and I wonder if that's uh, really an urban myth uh, more than anything else. I, I haven't heard the celery myth. Really? But uh, I have to be honest. When people are wasting time, spending time—I hate to say wasting. I don't want to say you guys wasted your time on that, but they're spending <laughs> time looking at something like celery when there's really a larger, more logical picture to look at, I think, mm -hmm. than, okay. than okay. how much energy you burn by eating celery, at, you know. <laughs> the, the celery diet, I haven't seen that but one But I'll tell you what we talk about, when we talk about strategies for weight control when you're eating, is when you eat foods like celery and, and apples and carrots, things that do take a long time to chew and swallow, okay. you're liable to eat less at that setting because it takes longer to eat. Whereas when you eat something that's uh, easy to swallow, a good fatty food, for, mm -hmm. french fries, mm -hmm. you can just, mm -hmm. celery takes time. Is there a fiber component that may be part the, of that The as fiber well? component is the big part of that. Okay. Think about okay. how long it takes you to eat an apple, mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. long to eat a blueberry muffin. Mm -hmm. Probably longer on the A apple. lot longer, yeah. Calorically, mm -hmm. close to the same. It's like when I'm throwing down a Snickers. Yeah. You know, it's gone quickly. <laughs> Actually, the muffin's probably more than the apple. Maybe yeah. This, but, but yeah, it's a lot. It's the fiber. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And, and you might burn a little more trying to digest some of that fiber. But ah. uh, again, it's... Uh, Small potatoes, no pun intended. <laughs> Good one. Good one. So, so when we're looking at uh, uh, kids and the rise of obesity rates among children, one of my uh, basic questions 
is uh, you know we're we're identifying um, more kiddos uh, who might be obese, uh, but is it because we're there are actually more kids who are obese, or are we just looking for them more now than we ever have in the past I think and that, finding them? That's an excellent question. I have to I have to go with what I've read that we have an increase mm -hmm. by the studies I've read. Could we be looking for it now than we were? Yes. Could that apply to the entire population? We're, how, how much were we looking at BMI 30 years ago? I don't know that we were. Yeah, I don't know if we were. How yeah. much were we looking for type 2 diabetes? Yeah. Well, we probably it, weren't as much. No. So I think you, you raise a good point there that some of that data could be skewed when you think of the increase, but I think there's still a logic there that we have seen an increase. How large an increase could be questionable. Could be questionable. Based on especially that. when you consider 30, 40 years ago access to medical care, especially for low socioeconomic status families sure. uh, perhaps was a lot less than it is now you know those and those from what I understand um, where we see a lot of obesity uh, rate increases uh, right. in low socioeconomic status people. right access uh, yeah. I think this is a good place to take a break uh, we'll be right back you're watching the education forum Education Forum with my uh, guest, Dr. Clay Nix, and my co-host, Greg Blaylock. Uh, we've been talking about obesity and weight loss and the exercise myth, and we've been grilling uh, Clay for a good period here. We're going to go <laughs> back at it. And I want to start out by saying, will doing crunches and ab workouts uh, reduce belly fat? Probably not. That's uh, one, not? one of the myths out there is the whole the, the notion that you can target specific body fat. So okay. if, I, if, I, if I've got belly fat here, if I do crunches, mm -hmm. it's going to burn off that specific fat here. Or right. if I've got fat here on the tricep right. area, which right. a lot of women struggle with, if I do a lot of tricep extensions, that'll burn fat. Uh, and our, our chemistry, our body chemistry just doesn't work that way. Okay. It's going to pull fat from wherever it sees fit. And it usually pulls fat from the places you don't want, it seems to. <laughs> First, I, I remember, then it may I do remember that. that from women. They yeah. always say they, they, they lose it on top. You lose it on top, or you lose it in your face and your neck, it. and then uh, it's just the way it's, it's just the way how our body kind of works. So what you're kind of saying is you just have to lose fat. You just have to lose fat okay. by restricting okay. your fat, and 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 belly crunches are good for strengthening your abdominal muscles and okay. working on your core, but they're probably not the best fat burning exercise because they're very anaerobic. Ah, okay. And anaerobic exercises are, are typically going to burn more carbohydrates. It's, it's, it's um, you know, if it's a higher intense exercise, it's going to, it's going to derive its fuel from carbohydrates. Okay, fat. you've confused me there. <laughs> if we're burning, we're burning. I thought, but you, you're burning carbs versus burning fats. If you're burning, you're burning, but you're burning carbs, fats, or protein. Mostly carbs or fats, depending okay. on how hard you're working out. Okay. Even sitting right here on the, talking here, we're both, all three of us are burning kind of a mixture of carbohydrates and fats, about 50-50 okay. or 60-40. Really? 60-40, probably carb to fat. Uh, when, you, when you begin to exercise, um, 
it depends on how hard you're, you're exercising. If you're doing aerobic exercise at a fairly moderate intensity, you're, you're probably going to start out burning carbohydrate, mm -hmm. but then you're going to okay. kind of shift to more carbohydrate slash fat, kind of an even mixture there. Okay. If you're doing something more anaerobic, like a really, really vigorous exercise or doing abdominal crunches like you talked about, it takes carbohydrates to do that. Okay. Because okay. carbohydrates are stored right there in the muscle and it, it, they're just quicker to access and that's what we use. But if you're burning carbs and it's eating up calories, won't it reduce fat in the long run? Um, it could okay. overall. I think that's okay. one of the hard, hard issues with exercise and weight loss because okay. a lot of times you are trying to target that fat. And yeah, fat. yeah. So maybe after you exercise when you're your resting energy expenditure is a little elevated, maybe you'll burn some fat. And you might burn a little fat while you're doing something fairly intense. Okay. Um, but um, probably not as much as you would hope. But okay. you're still going to get a caloric expenditure. Because it's, yeah, and, okay, and, you burn it. And, and you have to understand, you store carbohydrates. And you store carbohydrates in your muscles and your liver. Okay, I, I've so heard it in the liver. I didn't know in the muscles. Yeah, okay. most of it's in the muscle. Oh, all right. Okay. That's why it's so quick to grab and use. Oh, that quick energy. Right, the quick oh, energy. gotcha, gotcha, uh, okay. But we store carbohydrates with a lot of water, so when you burn those carbohydrates, you you typically lose a lot of water Ooh. weight. Uh, so, so That's why you see that quick weight loss after the first week so, or so. So back when I was playing tennis intensely and I'd lose 10 pounds in a, in a tennis, uh, tennis tournament. Then you'd burn, well, you'd sweat it a lot, yeah. more than likely, more than anything, and okay. then um, you also probably lost a little carbohydrate. Ah, okay. Uh, million dollar question. I go to the health food store, they're selling me fat burner capsules. <laughs> Do those work? Can you burn fat by taking a, a drug? Or? Uh, burn fat. I don't know much on that. There are some FDA approved fat blockers, meaning when you eat fat, it might block the absorption of that well, fat. That's like that product that they put in mayonnaise. They have that mayonnaise that um, what is the name of that product? But again, it's a fat blocker that doesn't get absorbed in your body. You just pass it along. They did it in chips and things. They did it in chips. Yeah. Uh, it, it blocks, well, you're thinking about a fat substitute, I think. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, and, yes, and I am. Oil I'm talking about right. something you take when you eat fat. It oh. actually will block the absorption of that fat. Okay, okay. Um, that's FDA. That's used sometimes when you're really treating someone who's obese. Okay. It's not just used exclusively, though. They'll use it that with a registered dietitian, with usually some type of activity intervention, and with caloric uh, restriction. So it's usually a total oh, okay. lifestyle. It's usually a, it somebody like. for yeah. severe obesity. But that's not Is the it going to help the common person? No, it's not the stuff you see at Walmart. Because you know Walmart has it, and you know the drugstores have it, and it's you know the fat burner. And yeah, I, I'm I'm usually really skeptical of some okay. of that. There, there and are, that's not a fat blocker. That's supposed to be you know. Yeah, fat burner. <laughs> I'm skeptical of that. Is there something you could take over the counter that might increase your resting energy expenditure a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Caffeine. Caffeine will do it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Is there an herb you can take? Yeah. Are those should should you try to lose weight with those? No. Okay. They're not. Okay. Uh, and a lot of times they're not regulated very well. Yeah. I, I and hear they're them, not going to help you lose. I hear them talk about hudia. Is that one of those herbs that you're supposed to you know burn? And yeah. I. I I have to be honest, I'm not really big on the herb market, so okay, I don't look okay. at it too much. It's a good question, though. Yeah, I just, you know, I see things like that. I'm, I'm skeptical. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, back to lifting weights and working out. Will lifting weights make women bulky? Are they going to turn into like Arnold? Uh, no. No. That, that's one of the myths no. out there. A lot of females are worried about resistance training and, yes. and building bulky. Um, I would say more often than not, no. And when you see the bodybuilders who are females, yes. who are bulked up, mm -hmm. they're probably taking something else to ah, help with that. Perhaps steroids. Steroids, Human yeah. growth yeah. hormone yeah. or something. Yeah. Okay. Um, but naturally, they're not going to bulk that same way. Right. No. No, they're not, that's not going to happen. And but you bring up, a, you didn't mean to do this, but <laughs> resistance training is recommended for everyone. Yes. Um, for weight loss, it's not really that effective. No, it's not. Right? It's not. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things I think that's oversold. Okay. Should you do resistance training? I think it's great. But if you're trying to do that to lose weight, there's not much evidence to support it. So why are we doing resistance training to strengthen our muscles? Strengthen your muscles, strengthen your bones, prevent okay. osteoporosis. Uh, older people do it to sort of help with balance and daily activities. Ah, and, you know, okay. It's good okay. for muscle tone. Okay. It, it might help decrease and change your body composition some. So it's good for all of that. Okay. If you're doing it exclusively to lose weight. You're wasting your time. Yep, it's gonna be a challenge it for you. It's gonna be, a ch okay, okay. <laughs> I hate okay. to say waste time. <laughs> so, 
people go out there using a cardio machine, are those accurate in the amount of calories that you're burning? I would say it depends on the machine. Okay. Um, it, it, if, you, if you enter your weight mm -hmm. into the machine mm -hmm. and they're using the same formula that I, that I teach my exercise testing oh. prescription class, then okay. it's going to be as accurate as it can be with okay. what we know. Now, when I get on the treadmill, it always asks for my weight and you put it in and it does tell you. And that's what it, it's, it's basing, it's basing how fast you're walking in the grade that you're walking. Okay. And it can take those two variables and estimate how many calories you're burning based on your weight. And it's pretty accurate. As accurate as it can be using, okay. using the formulas. Okay. It's, it's, it's one of those things, is it, is it accurate for everyone? No. Okay. But we, we've got studies, long-term studies, that if someone walks on a treadmill three miles an hour, mm -hmm. here's how much oxygen it takes for them to do this activity and we and when you consume oxygen you're going to burn calories okay and the more okay. oxygen you consume the more calories you're going to, to burn and so we use that and that's how that's how that's that's, ah, done. that's how that's calculated that's how it's calculated okay. Okay. so it's it's going to give you the best estimate it can all right and is it meaningful I in other words <laughs> if, if i if i had a couple of cokes today uh, to work the calories of those cokes off, go to the go to the my treadmill and punch it in and go until I've utilized used those calories. I mean, is is that a meaningful way of trying to burn off my extra coke? I think it is for for some people. If if they're really, and there it depends on the person. If they're really, mm -hmm. if, and there are people out there who do a lot of self monitoring, mm -hmm. which is a strategy, it's a a behavioral strategy that people use in weight loss interventions, keeping up with what you do all the time. So these are the people that go calculate everything they eat, mm -hmm. how much exercise they do, and, and really that's the best thing they mm -hmm. can do. If they mm -hmm. happen to have that extra soda and they want to make sure they they account for that, right. then sure. And, and you, you'd be surprised at how much work it takes to burn off a couple hundred calories. A couple you know, hundred. I don't want to discourage anyone here. No, yeah, no, right, but, absolutely. But, you bring yeah, up an interesting yeah. point. I've thought about this in the past. I, I knew somebody long ago who kept uh, what he called a um, a food journal. Yeah. Right. in order right. to track uh, what he was eating at, 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 throughout the, the weeks. Is that something that, that's generally useful for people in terms of losing weight? Yeah, it is. It's, it's, again, how, how does a food journal work? It, well, people just write down what they eat, and it gives them a visual. It, it's like writing down, wow, I didn't know I had 4,000 calories <laughs> yesterday, and it mm. keeps them accountable. It's a, it's a technique. Again, when you're talking about really helping someone lose weight, it mm -hmm. really depends on the person. Okay. So usually there's sort of a multi-intervention approach. Physical activity is always at the core of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So no matter what people think, it's it's always recommended because okay. you do get caloric loss. There's caloric reduction, how many times a day you eat, portion sizes, okay. and mm -hmm. then other things like monitoring. Here's what I'm doing and keeping track of that. Okay. So what you're kind of saying is people aren't aware of how much they're taking in in a day. More often, they're, they're not. And uh, it actually leads to a good point about some of the legislation out there trying to get restaurants, forcing them to well, put what they put on the, on menus. And that just came out in the new uh, health care bill, I see. Yeah, yeah, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that that's one of the uh, parts of the new health care bill, is all restaurants are required to do that, is put caloric. I, I did not know that. that. Yes. And I, well, it was 2,000 pages long. I couldn't. Well, you didn't read all 2,000. So <laughs> there, there are some good things about that bill, and, and, and that's one of them, I, I think, for sure. Because we, we required of, of companies now, uh, in the grocery stores, there's the Food Label Act of 1990 mm -hmm. requires you to put on most foods how many calories in the serving. Right. So I think people should know when but they go to McDonald's how much how much. Uh, sure, you should. How much it is. But you know, you tell me that, and I buy something at the store, and it says you know 250 calories in a serving, and I go, oh, okay, cool, and I, and then I look, and it's like six crackers. Absolutely. You know, right, or right. four right. pieces of candy. Right. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's. Uh, the it doesn't help me a lot. The other question I always have when I see those types of things, and maybe this is an unanswerable question, but I wonder who polices that? And, yeah, and as I think about a restaurant putting their calorie load for a plate, um, how, how do we know how accurate that might be? And, and I would imagine that changes depending upon how they fix it on a particular week or, or something like that. I, I don't know. I, well, it would be like the FDA or the USDA, one of those okay, two, would, okay. would just like to do with the food label. I, I would imagine it's going to be the same. They're going to police it the same way. And a lot of restaurants do it now already. They, they just have it online. Oh, oh, it's yes, it's that's it's right. Sure. You can go out and check on the Big Mac already. You can but check on everything you're online. Carrying your, you know. And mm -hmm. I think there's probably some resistance from the restaurant industry about about doing this. Okay. Okay. Well, 
when, in, in staying along the uh, this line of um, food and calories and that sort of thing, I wonder, uh, uh, with regard to childhood obesity, what can we do in the schools with regard to school lunches? I mean, are we doing anything there? Uh, do school districts uh, consider school lunches as a part of their fight against obesity? Uh, generally speaking, or do you know much about that? I, I have to say uh, that's really out of my area in terms of what the schools are doing. All I do is probably read, and you guys probably know more than I do, um, that there have been efforts made to make school lunches healthier, but there's still vending well, uh, opportunities there, yes. and they're afraid kids won't eat if, if it's not um, not full of calories, not, not full, full of, of fat, calories, not full of sugar. Fat, yeah. and, um, so there's some. Uh, Challenges there, I think, yes. is, a, is a good way to say that. Well, um, something I just recently read is that uh, some of the major companies are now pulling their vending machines out of the schools. Yeah. Because there's been so much pressure. So much pressure to on get that. that. You know, sugar out of there. I think a lot of it has to do with what they do at home. Uh, well, yeah. For I mean, many of them. Again, it's behavior. Behavior. And, and behavior change seems to be the issue. It, major issue. Okay. So now, what about the whole, the old axiom, no pain, no gain when working out? Um. I don't buy into that okay, too much. Okay, um, okay. I do to a degree because I like to exercise and push myself to a point, but can you get benefits in a moderate level intensity exercise bout or, or somewhat vigorous without feeling a lot of pain? Yeah, yeah? absolutely. You okay. don't have to have pain every time you, you run or jog. Or okay. So it's, it's not, I'm not any less manly by staying away <laughs> from the pain when no, I work out? No, no, not at all. <laughs> okay. Um, you're okay. Still, That's a relief, uh, actually. Yeah, you, there's, to me, there's nothing to that. Even in athletics, when you want to push someone really hard, I think it's good at times to do that, but sometimes mm -hmm. it can have a negative. You can injure the person. Right, right. And they can't do anything anymore. So it, it, what mm -hmm. are you trying to accomplish? I blew out my shoulder, now I can't work out anymore. It's one of those yeah, yeah. common kind of perceptions. Sure. I've got to go in there sure. and work hard. And, it's, and, and a lot of times people relate that, if they don't exercise, they relate that to maybe a coach back in elementary or junior high that made them run mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. punishment. And, and that's yeah, their view yeah. of exercise. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not, it doesn't have to be that. You know, th I think that's an excellent point yeah. and it's, it's something we also find in the other parts of education. Right. You know, right. we turn it into a punishment. It's something but into a punishment. I think kind of to, to wrap up a lot of what we've been talking about today, what should we be doing to lose weight and maintain health? What you, you know, what's, what's a prescription or, or, or some suggestions you could give us <laughs> rather than? Uh, portion sizes are key. I, I'm, I don't believe in rad, radically changing your diet. I think you can still, well, some people need to radically change their diet. Okay. But I think you can still enjoy some of the foods we all love, particularly down here in the South, some of okay. the desserts and some of the things. Um, I think those are good. Okay. I think it's just portion control uh, consistently. All right, okay. More than, and, and, and eating healthy foods. Some people don't eat any healthy foods. They don't eat vegetables. And, and I'm always amazed by that, and being they, down here in the South. Yeah. The number of people say, I don't eat vegetables. I don't eat vegetables. What do you mean I don't eat vegetables, yeah. you know? Or, or Which is always curious when it's coming from somebody who's over like 10 years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You expect that from somebody who's yeah. eight. Though. Or aren't French fries vegetables? They, uh, they kind of are counted as such. <laughs> but doing that with, with exercise, or that's the bad word, okay. um, physical activity, and not using the bad word diet, not telling yourself you're going on a diet, because that usually means temporary. Okay. You, you need well, to train your brain to think of something I'm doing, I'm making permanent changes. Lifestyle. Type. Lifestyle well, changes. And you know, you mentioned diet. I mean, there's a new diet every week, there's isn't there? There's a new there? diet every week. Um, aren't they all working? <laughs> they work for the person who sells the book. Okay. okay. And so. all of them usually at the core have some way of reducing calories. Okay. And, 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 and there's some good and bad parts to all of them, I all think. Right. Uh, well, some have, I think, more bad parts than anything. But I, I always like the Atkins diet. <laughs> <laughs> some people use it. Oh, I know they it do. It works great for a do. year, and then they realize, hey, bread is not a bad thing. Well, you know, and, and I, I tried it, and that's what happened is you, you miss those carbs. You miss those carbs. You, you really do. Uh, another one I tried at one time was the Pritikin diet, and, you know, that was to save, you know, America's heart. That was his whole plan. Right. And uh, I don't have enough discipline. It's... <laughs> It's challenging when you really drastically change it. Okay. It needs to be something I think you gradually do. Well, and, and that's something you did mention is you shouldn't you, do it drastically. You, that you, People want the instant 30 pound, 20 pound weight loss. It yes. took them two or three years to get. Yes. And they want to take it off in a month or two. 
That's yeah. an excellent point because yeah, yeah it, it didn't just come on no, it didn't yesterday. Just come on. Mm -hmm. It's called creeping obesity, is what yep. it's called. Okay. And, and I always say, think about how long it took you to get there, and then give yourself that much time to lose it. And usually, it's going to be maybe a pound or two a week is what's recommended. That's probably the safest way to go. That's, then. that's what that's what they're recommending. You'll usually you'll usually learn the first lose the first five or ten pounds the first couple of weeks because they lose a lot of fluid. Right, right. Uh, and then after that, it's it's. Then it's real pounds. work. It's 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 harder. Okay. But you need to keep it realistic. Mm -hmm. People, yeah. we are Americans. We want it now. Y yes. So. But I, I like your point there when you say you know it didn't come on in a week. It, no. It's going to take. Rarely. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Usually it took months or a year or years to mm -hmm. gradually get there. Okay. So okay. it may take that long to. So, bottom line, eat less, exercise more. Eat less, exercise more. And that's gonna gonna be the, the big thing. That's the big thing. Okay. And and do you recommend the journaling? For some people, okay. yeah. I think um, some people, and I'll tell you one program I think works well, and I'm not advertising for them. No, um, no, no. But the uh, Weight Watchers program has worked well because it, mm. it incorporates uh, portion control and it has mm -hmm. a support group. Yes. Support groups are really big with people. Absolutely. Uh, so I encourage that. Mm -hmm. It's just like starting an exercise program. You got mm -hmm. someone to go work out with. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier. Sure. And a lot of times it might have a journaling component with it. And then what happens is after a while you don't need any of that anymore. You don't have to do it forever. You just sort of have changed the way you look at food. And, and part of it's awareness. It's, it's awareness. It, it's creating awareness about what you're doing. Okay, how much you're taking in. How much you're taking that, in. That you are snacking all day or, right. or whatever. Okay. And okay. then on that, on, I'm the exercise professional on the other end. I'll have my class um, journal how much activity they get in one day. Mm -hmm. not, mm. not, not structured exercise, but I have them journal from for 24 hours how much movement did you get and you'd be surprised at how sedentary mm. you, you are sometimes it's not on purpose i mean we work hours and sedentary jobs you know and that's that creates awareness there too you you mentioned that but i see people here in our building that never take the stairs yeah they yeah. never take the stairs they're always taking the elevator and it's like we're not really working too hard at it right. are we and that's that that's the norm in the country i think and okay. we all probably do that <laughs> To, to some degree, we, we look for the closest parking spot, or um, we don't rake our leaves, we buy the leaf blower, and we, we do things to take, uh, because we have all these nice conveniences Yes, now. we do. And and so yeah. uh, you have to be aware of that. Okay, okay. Now, you mentioned earlier that we can't necessarily blame it on video games or gaming. No. How about TV? I think it's um, one of many contributing factors. Okay. Think about all the things that keep you from, from moving. And think about what you do when you eat when you watch TV. Okay. Do you have a soda while you're watching TV, or do you eat snack food while you watch TV? I'd say most of America well, a does. A lot of people yeah. do that. And yeah. So, so yeah. number one, you're decreasing your activity, and then you're increasing your energy intake. And, okay. And you do that over a period of time, like 100 calories extra, or 200 calories over weeks and weeks and weeks. And creeping obesity. Creeping obesity. Okay. Gets you. Okay. I, and those I are the that. things. Um, which is why you want a television that runs off the energy you create when you're on the treadmill. <laughs> good, good point, good point, good point. But I, I'm, I'm big on keeping all the things like that that you like, the keeping television. If you like video game, keeping that. Okay. But, but yeah, otherwise you're not going to stick to whatever it is you're doing. You're not going to stick that's to your, it. Yeah, right. That's what you're well, saying. And, and the biggest thing I think you're saying is it's a change in behavior. It's a change in behavior. It's everything. I mean, again, it's, it's a behavior that's causing it, and if we can change that behavior, you know. It's a... It, for, and for most people it is. And then there are some people who are going to have a harder time than others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and you've known those kids since elementary school. There are always larger kids. Mm -hmm. And yes, you can't tell me right. that's not you're, genetics. No. Well, if you look at their parents, they probably had one or both parents that were large, and they're going to have a harder time than somebody else. But if you go into those homes and you see those people that are unusually large, that have the large children, they also have the worst eating the habits eating in habits, the world. It seems like it. No, yeah. And I can't blame genetics for that. I think that's learned behavior. No, I, don't believe, I don't believe in blaming genetics. <laughs> okay, that only okay. accounts for a couple of percentages, <laughs> probably. But there are some who, have, who are going to have a harder time than others, who do expend less energy at rest than somebody else. Ah, that's where you get into ah, you know, things and, that aren't and, your fault. And we hadn't mentioned that, right. you know, expending more energy in like, the table. You know, one of the ways you expend energy is resting energy. And some yeah. people just burn more calories at rest than somebody else. Okay. I mean, they're just like uh, a light bulb. They're just, <laughs> okay. and some people are real slow. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, you've been watching the Education Forum with my uh, guest, uh, Clay Nix, and my co-host, Greg Blaylock. And uh, thank you for watching.